Times are changing, and technology is constantly evolving. What was hot yesterday is now mega out. Today, we want to digitize an old Super 8 film in the best possible quality with a Sony A7S III without a PC or Mac and without post-processing. The vertical mirroring is to be done before the recording via hardware and the digitized file is to be saved directly to an external SSD hard drive via a Blackmagic Video Assist. We perform the same workflow not only with the Sony A7S III but also with a DSLR camera, the Canon 7D Mark II, to compare the results afterwards. Not only cameras have changed a lot in the last decades, but also digitization options and playback devices. Anyone who has ever filmed their movies from screen or paper knows about hotspots, frequency problems, and distortion. With prism devices, there's also the structure of the glass pane. Even more disturbing are the compression artifacts and image noise of frame-by-frame -frame systems, the low-cost film scanners that use industrial cameras. The tiny sensors cannot create images nearly as well as the sensors in contemporary mirrorless or DSLR cameras. The question we want to answer today is this. How can I digitize a Super 8 film in the best quality with the current cameras and without any post-processing? The Sony A7S III is said to be one of the most suitable photo body cameras for video. The recently developed back illuminated full frame sensor produces very large pixels and thus an extremely high dynamic range of 15 f-stops at 10 bit is possible. The sensor is very light sensitive and the low light characteristics are very good. To what extent is this at all noticeable in film digitization and the sometimes very coarse grain of the Super 8 or Normal 8 material? At first glance, we notice the rotating and swiveling mirror and the power supply via USB-C as particularly positive features of the Sony camera. These two features are advantageous for digitizing. Changing and charging camera batteries that only last a few hours is annoying during film transfer. Because vertical mirroring is required on all direct scans from the film gate, but we don't want any post-processing, we connected to the camera's HDMI output, Decimator Design's 12G cross converter, which mirrors the signal, and then passes it on to the Blackmagic Video Assist, here the 7-inch version, where it's recorded directly to an SSD hard drive connected via USB-C. The Super 8 projector is a Bauer Studio projector converted by Film Digital, which instead of running at 18 frames, now runs at 16.66 frames per second. The projector is equipped with high quality Film Digital Transfer optics and a high-tech LED set that allows control of brightness and color temperature. We're particularly interested in the colors, since we don't want to do any post-processing today. Even the sometimes extreme differences between AGFA and Kodak material can be equalized a bit with the color temperature control. And for the color or contrast control, there's also an important new feature of the Sony A7S III in the camera, the s Cinetone Color Profile, which can be found under PP11 at Photo Profiles. S-Cinetone already offers a film look due to smooth, natural transitions. This is especially noticeable in skin tones. The contrasts are not exhausted here, which means that the highlights don't burn out as easily and the black areas still have definition. 
The S Cinetone profile looks like professional film even without subsequent color grading. If post-processing were planned, you might be more likely to choose an even flatter color profile like S Log 3, to which you'd later apply an LUT and post-process in DaVinci Resolve. But for today's workflow without a PC or Mac, this is not suitable. We don't record in 4K with the Sony today, but use the APS-C simulation in full HD to make the results more comparable to the Canon 7D Mark II. The decimator can be configured either by pressing a button or by using a computer. Using a PC or Mac via USB connection is much easier in our opinion. The video assist menu is simple and self-explanatory. Especially great are the waveforms of the video level, which can also be placed semi-transparent on the image. Of course, we can also display the zebra function or the histogram of the camera also on the video assist. Now we start the transfer, focusing on controlling both exposure and color temperature early, but gently. In this project, constant looking and reacting is extremely important, since we don't want to touch the file after the transfer. Recorded as ProRes 422, the files in full HD are about 1 gigabyte per minute. You can imagine how much information they contain when you look at the images in detail. This capture, which we took with the Sony A7S III, is a very well-preserved Kodak film with low grain. You can still see this grain as a result of the top-notch transfer lens. It should not be confused with image noise, which is definitely not detectable up to at least 1000 ISO in the transfer. For a comparison between the two cameras, however, we'll use a more coarse-grained AGFA film. More ISO was needed with the Canon EOS 7D Mark II, but this can only be seen in the magnification. The very old scan of the film with a Sony camcorder in full HD on the left cannot keep up in any respect. This technology is really outdated. With the Sony A7S III recording with the S Cinetone profile, we see a bit more dynamic range and thus more details than with the Canon. With the Canon EOS 7D Mark II, we had recorded without the color profile so it's hard to compare the two files in this regard. However, in the Canon image, you can see a bit less detail in the highlights and the depths. The contours look a bit sharper in the Sony A7S III recording. Even in a transfer with the Sony A7S III without color profile, you can still see a bit more detail here than with the 7D Mark II. The smooth contrasts and warm color temperature even make the look of the Sony transfer similar to that of a screen projection. Of course, any other film camera, mirrorless or DSLR camera, can be connected to this workflow in this way as long as it outputs a full clean HDMI signal. This has made working with the film digital system much easier and faster once again. because we finally have a way to save ourselves mirroring and can thus record without any post-processing and completely without a computer. If you liked this video, please subscribe to our channel and visit our online store at www.filmdigital.com.